All right, E. Ermor turned 21. The attack against Agartha has commenced. Also, we found a magic site, Wellspring of Secrets. Sad to only find one uh, with our rainbow, but he's doing a decent job of finding us sites. Uh, our other site searching, not so successful. Uh, this was more or less uncontested, although we do shed a slinger, which is fine, and we shed one of our sacreds less fine um yeah not a lot of pd i guess the light calf got lucky like it happens um definitely a downside of you know this sort of doom stack approach because you're kind of you're always risking your main force against stuff that you just you don't need to um so kind of a downside to that attack uh and then <laughs> similarly this isn't quite as much of a doom stack uh but you know considering how much abyssia has invested into their bless um, and how many of their sacreds are here. This is pretty heavy commitment, um, but they do take out this, you know, heavier than normal PD with no problems. That is nice. And then we catch a storm uh, by Ur against Shibalba, and this is also more or less uncontested. Yeah, just a few foul spawn in here. I'm um, just kind of curious to see, like, what Ur is rocking. Um, like, a good amount of troops, quite a few of these archers who have longbows, and since they're half giants, actually a pretty damaging attack and with you know very long range uh, so those guys can be really dangerous and like yeah he's got some mage support in here looks like they're kind of doing point buffing uh, probably not enough mages to really make that much of a difference in terms of the point buffing uh, but I, I do like it you know and you, you want to be careful about committing all your mages obviously like he doesn't he doesn't need any mages uh, for this fight and you know he's got this pretender here anyway like yeah a pretty scary looking force um you know looks like a solid army to me and then we had an unexpected event yep, children disappearing in the night that's unfortunate and then speaking of unfortunate we got patrolled out uh in helheim and uh, so yeah he's he's patrolling we can take a look i don't i don't know if we've seen his bless yet um but yeah he was patrolling with quite a lot on his capital so probably things are not going fantastic for him using quite a few of his non sacreds uh, which is kind of interesting they're still pretty expensive as I recall since they're elves um, they are pretty effective and I think most of this is just his province defense um, but in terms of the bless let's take a look at it here on this Valkyrie uh, so decay weapons undying plus two undead leadership plus 20 uh, so yeah pretty much just death it looks like and possibly his pretender is dead and there's like an awake portion of the bless that's now offline because uh, that seems pretty light I don't actually see his god patrolling here um, so yeah Helheim usually invests in a heavier bless than that but uh, I do think that the elves, you know, you can play them scales, I'm guessing. Like, you know, their troops are good enough that, you know, if you go heavy on the scales, that is an interesting, like, something I might actually like to try myself uh, to see, you know, how, how effective it is. But a lot of times the elves' sacreds are so good, it, it's hard to completely ignore having a bless. Uh, but yeah, so... People don't love having assassins like on their capital, so this may explain some later events. I wasn't doing any assassinating, just using him as a scout, but you know, of course, Helheim doesn't necessarily know that. Uh, and then we finished construction of a fort, so we upgraded it, cured some afflictions, and then yeah, we had quite a bit of starvation. Uh, th this was unfortunate, so let's see what we're doing about it. So this is the situation and what we're up to. Uh, we're, we're just going for it. <laughs> um, starvation be damned. And it, it is quite a bit of starvation, so you can use S to see, uh, you know, who's starving in, in which squads. As we can see, uh, most of the army is starving, right? Um, and this, this reduces their morale by a good chunk, which is not the end of the world. Like, we have, especially on our sacreds, like, pretty good morale. The militia, <laughs> I'm sure they're their morale is in the, in the toilet. So we can see we have a mighty uh, five morale on our militia. Our infantry are probably also not doing fantastic. Yeah, morale nine, which, it, you know, isn't the end of the world, but it, it's not good And since morale is kind of one of the advantages. Better than average morale of, you know, early age or more. It is very sad uh, to be going into battle with not one of our advantages. But there doesn't really look like there's a whole lot in here. Right, um, you know, we see some magma children, like great ohms, like he's got casters. So yeah, you know, it's not going to be easy. Uh, but you know, we heavily outnumber them. You know, we have a fairly strong bless. Uh, we're also making a raid here, which in retrospect, like, mm, kind of questionable considering there's this force right here. So I'm assuming I was thinking he was going to attack me, uh, but you know, in retrospect, when you have a stack like this sitting next to your capital, I think the natural move is you know to try to come home, especially because I mean he can see that I have some units here. Like he doesn't necessarily know that they're raiders, but 
uh, you know, it's a pretty safe assumption. So this seems like way too obvious of a raid and, you know, will probably get taken out. So this raid is a little bit better, uh, although, you know, it does have its issues. We're splitting out, you know, quite a few of our troops. Uh, this is too strong of a raiding force for this one province. I think the plan was, you know, to continue raiding like around his capital. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think we can actually get into this cave system here. So, yeah, the movement in this area is uh, constrained. So <laughs> this probably won't be the last mistake I'll be making concerning movement options in the area. But yeah, not my best attack ever, but was feeling fairly confident. We can see more or less that Agartha doesn't really have any other infrastructure possibly something going up here since there's a temple here but you know I, my expectation like I just have my scout like waiting here because usually people want to put forts on thrones uh, although in a game this big you can certainly get away with waiting on that because it's going to be a long long time before anybody's you know going to get a throne victory so unless you're worried about somebody like raiding your unforted throne and which knocks away your your claim to it so you lose the benefits of it which is pretty annoying, especially if it's a good throne with really nice benefits, uh, but this may not be a good throne, right? Some of the thrones people don't even want to claim. Um, in fact, I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Has he claimed this? Yeah, so it's the throne of bureaucracy, which like, yeah, I've, yeah, <laughs> that's probably one that you don't necessarily want to fort right away. So yeah, in retrospect, may have been a little too complacent with my scouting, uh, but you know, we've been through most of his lands and we know there aren't any other forts up. So, you know, if we can lock down his capital, like pretty much, you know, what, what we see here is what we're going to be up against, which isn't too much stuff. Uh, so it's feeling good at this point. Otherwise, like, yeah, just moving around, like, you know, some site searchers, bringing down uh, some gladiators in various points. Uh, just to garrison this fort in case it all goes bad. Um, probably also going to drop some gladiators off like on the throne, which speaking of, we also have not forted and, you know, are not forting just yet. We'll get around to it. But yeah, I think that covers the majority of it. Uh, we can see this, you know, Ur army is actually a little on the cutoff side, so not sure how the war is doing at large, but they did just take a fort, you know, which is a really big deal, so that's nice. <laughs> doing more scouting uh, with my assassin, so he's trying to get out of there so it doesn't get patrolled out. And then, you know, otherwise, yeah, we kind of lost eyes down here, so so we have less information, and then we have another scout cruising around. Looks like Satis is probably relatively small, um, and then this throne has not been taken, so we're probably going to hang out on this throne and, you know, see what people in this area are rocking uh, when they come in to capture it. So, yeah, I think that covers turn 21. All right, E. Ermor, turn 22. Well, let's take a look at our assault on Agartha's capital. Uh, you know, we have a substantial force here. We, we've We've seen this before. No uh, mage support, which could be an issue, but it does not look like there's too much opposing us here. This might just be PD. Uh, there is a caster here, so maybe not, but he's got no gems, so that's not too worrying. Uh, I don't know if they get mind blasters as part of their PD. Um, probably not, so maybe some patrolling. Uh, anyway, you know, we've got our cavalry right on attack rear, I believe. Yeah, these guys are getting hung up, uh, but we want to get in there, mess up any casters, and of course the mind blasters. Um, unfortunately, you know, I had hired these militia originally to catch lances from Arco Cephali, but I was kind of hoping that they would soak up, you know, they have pretty, pretty low magic resistance, uh, which is checked when you get mind blasted. So I was hoping, you know, since we have slightly higher magic resistance uh, with the Equite that at least some of those mind blasts would go after, you know, the militia, but so far they've, they've all been on target. I think it's that uh, our hit points, oh, well, this guy's injured a little bit, but yeah, so the Equite have 13 hit points, right? Whereas the militia only have nine. So I'm assuming, yeah, the Equite are like a bit more of an attractive target, uh, but we have enough numbers here, right? There aren't too many mind blasters. Uh, they will run out of ammunition, you know, our slingers are getting in there. Obviously this is in the cave, uh, so, you know, the Pale One troops are doing much better against, you know, our legionaries than they normally would, because uh, we don't see so well in the dark, and they see just fine. But, you know, I mean, yeah. Equite of the Sacred Shroud are pretty good. And we also weren't up against all that much. So there was a little bit of patrolling. Uh, brought out, you know, a few of the Mind Blasters and some Cavern Guard. And this looks like probably just the standard uh, PD. So no PD dump. 
uh, we yeah we don't lose too much uh, so that's good now that we're on top of a capital our starvation issues should be solved and while it would have been nice to draw like more of the casters out you know and kill them in the field now we have to go into the fort which is always a little dicey uh, you know I think I think we're in pretty good shape here uh, there were a few other battles uh, so we caught it looks like Helheim and Agartha are in fact fighting um, and yeah, so this is Helheim raiding against like, yeah, maybe 10 PD, kind of a crappier PD type. Um, so yeah, usually those Van Hurst, they usually do pretty well. He's got some air gems here. Um, cast air shield on himself. That's solid. The bless. The bless is not, like I said, you know, we talked a little bit about it. It's not really doing a whole lot right now for this guy. Um, decay weapons, I guess, will help a little bit. And then, yeah, he's using the air gems to give himself mist form. So, yeah, fairly standard elven rating, I would say. Uh, no gear, though. Flight, yeah, he's going to go for an attack rear. Um, lands among the archers. Probably going to work out for him. Yeah, there's the, the withering weapons. Yeah, he's getting the commander. Um, but, yeah, he's taking a lot of damage here. That's the mist form with all the ones bringing the damage down. But, you know, you can see, yeah, zero hit points. This is the undying. So I think, yeah, he has, you know, two undying hit points. So he's about to die. Yeah. And it doesn't work out for him. So, you know, elven raiding doesn't always work out. Uh, speaking of raiding, this is one of our raids. Yeah, just our bone tribe. <laughs> yeah. They run into that army. Ah, the benefits of hindsight. Uh, although I, I do think, you know, this is something that I really ought to have seen coming uh, at the time, but did not, did not, or, you know, just felt that it was worth risking. Um, you know, there's a few other moves we could have made. Anyway, yeah, this is, these guys are on attack rear. That's kind of interesting. Um, but, you know, we, we don't have nearly enough stuff here. Uh, so we lose that raiding party. That is very sad. These guys are headed back for the capital, but not too worried about this. You know, our main army can definitely take that. We do actually have fire resistance on the Bless. Definitely relevant against magma children. And then this is our other raid, which is, you know, a little on the heavy side. And, yeah, we're up against nothing. Uh, so we're going to take that, no problem. And then we catch a few other battles. Yeah, another fight uh, between Helheim and Agartha. Looks like another raid. Very similar. Yeah, probably going to be the same script. It's going to go better. Horse Tribe is a bit better of a PD type, although there's less investment here. And, of course, he's got air shields, so he's not going to care about the arrows. And then Flight, which isn't going to matter too much here because the archers stay in the back and, you know, defend the, well... They don't really defend the commander, uh, but, you know, simply by <laughs> shooting their bows and not moving forward, they end up defending the commander, making it a lot harder to just snipe the commander. Um, but, yeah, so it looks like there's a route. So his morale fails, which um, I think is kind of an issue with the elves in general. Yeah, we can see morale 14. I think this is getting taken down. No, not this, that's, yeah, base morale of only 13. So not actually great morale uh, for raiders. And I, that's the case for a lot of different elven raiders. But assuming he had a retreat route, you know, he, he didn't die. So not the end of the world. And then we lose the province we were just starving in uh, to a Helheim raider. And <laughs> I'm assuming... It, it's hard to tell, right? This may have just been like his rating against Agartha, and you know we just happened to get in the way of that, uh, or possibly it was payback uh, for the assassin <laughs> that, was, that was on his capital, which, like I said, I wasn't actually doing any assassinating with. But you know, sometimes people just shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, you know, I did reach out to this player. Uh, this. This was definitely annoying because uh, this is our only retreat route for our main army. So it's actually like kind of a, a critical raid and definitely made me think that, yeah, I mean, maybe Helheim is our, our next target. So I do reach out to this player, uh, but, you know, they were one of the players that they, they never really communicated. Uh, so, yeah, we don't really don't have any additional insight into what that player was thinking. Uh, this is Niflheim pinging a throne. It looks like it's just a wizard throne. I say just a wizard throne. This guy's not too bad. Uh, but wizard thrones, like, yeah, fire four with a ton of fire gems. That can be pretty scary depending on, like, what kind of setup you have. This guy, less scary. Um, and, you know, a pile of barbarians. That, that can be nasty. Uh, but I have faith in this Niflheim player that they will do just fine against that. And then unexpected events, of course. Uh, we lose some Dominion. That's sad. We get some water gems. That's nice. And, you know, some people showed up. So that's cool. And we are now sieging Agartha. Uh, severely damaged. You know, that, that's good. Not a one-turn crack, but it should be cracked uh, next turn. And we'll be able to make the assault. And uh, yeah, let's see what we're up to. Oops, almost forgot. Uh, we cast Dark Knowledge and found a Well of Pestilence. Uh, so that's more Death Gems. That's good. Although it does mean moving through that province is, you know, not recommended. 
Uh, and then we missed with a site search and we finished some research. So we're doing uh, just up to construction two, I think for uh, fire in a jar, which is kind of a useful, it just gives you a temporary fire gem, which you can use. Uh, we're probably primarily going to be using it to summon in elementals at this point in the game. Uh, construction two will also get you owl quills, uh, which Early Age or more can sometimes forge. We don't actually have any air income right now, though, so this is maybe a bit of a questionable research choice in retrospect, uh, but it's what I went with. And then Abyssia is trying to buy a hammer. So yeah, now let's see what we're up to. All right, so this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, we're splitting out some troops from our main army and bringing up you know, some reinforcements, like, yeah, there's not too much here. We're also throwing some lesser fire elementals at the problem. Uh, we don't have those jars yet, so they do have to bring out and spend some fire gems, which is sad. We, Our fire income, this is all from our capital. <laughs> we actually have not found a single fire site yet. And I mean, our searching has not been extensive, right? There's still, yeah, the throne is a big one. Like we're, you know, we're, we're getting there. Um, but like, yeah, we haven't done no searching for fire. So a little sad that we haven't found any of that, but our capital does provide, you know, a lot of gems. Uh, so we're spending some fire gems to fix this Helheim problem. We really, this is overkill in all likelihood. Like even if the raider chose to hang out and patrol and like he PD dumped, like all of which is pretty unlikely. Uh, but this province, right, it's our only retreat route really. Like this province connects, but I don't think you can retreat across the river. Uh, certainly we can't move across it, so it'd be kind of weird if it allowed it as a retreat route. So yeah, this is an incredibly important province for us to retake, so that's why we're kind of committing, you know, more more than we strictly need to. Uh, and then we actually can get into this. I think we just lucked out, and like the scales changed. It is winter, so... Um, I think Agartha has taken, yeah, at least some heat scales and like, yeah, just happened to warm up. So happily, uh, this force can get into this cave and continue their raiding. So that, that worked out. And then, of course, here's this other Agartha force uh, that will probably try to combine with a breakout potentially. I'm not really sure what else they could do with it short of like covering this temple. We can see a little bit of foreign recruitment going on. Uh, these like dog headed fellows are kind of nasty. So, you know, as far as foreign recruiting troops, that's a pretty good choice. They also, you know, do pretty well in caves. Uh, so we are actually moving out like, yeah, some of our scouts, this guy's still hanging out. But yeah, pretty much continuing our limited raiding, right? Sitting on top of the capital uh, to break it next turn and, you know, repelling any attempts to get us off the capital. And then we should be going in next turn. Uh, otherwise, like I said, I think these are all, yeah, like gladiator movement um, and just bringing up, I think, yeah, a few more mages to get them closer uh, to the combat. Recruitment wise, uh, of course, Equite, the Sacred Shroud. Yeah, a few standards. We are trying to mix in some more auger elders now, uh, although mostly still just like auger recruitment, uh, although we are skipping a mage this turn to get a few centurions because we're kind of low in terms of like leading around like different, you know, we're leading this. And but this is preferred if it's just some random raiding group, you know, using an independent commander. Um, but yeah, we don't really have like any, all of our leadership is tied up with this army. We don't really have any other leadership to start setting up a second force. In terms of the diplomatic situation, uh, we see Yomi here is bordering Niflheim to the east, and I believe it's around this time that I reach out to this player, uh, you know, who does get back to me, and just sound him out about how they feel about a joint war against Niflheim. Uh, I know that, you know, this player is pretty good, and uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're, Niflheim is kind of always, they're a dangerous nation, right, in the hands of a good player, so I, I'm going to need some help uh, you know, to, take, to take him out, I think in a 1v1 situation, especially since, you know, he's he's had a second capital uh, for longer than I have. At best, it would be a bloody war, uh, so having an ally would help a lot, and uh, yeah, the Yomi player was like somewhat interested, you know, I think they were, like, nobody loves having Niflheim on their border, so yeah, I told him I just needed to you know wrap up this Agartha war but you know hopefully in like five turns or so ten turns maybe you know I'll be ready to go uh, against Niflheim and then other than that we are continuing our scouting a little bit in the wider world uh, we do see some more of Oceania down here although now we have found some of Pelagia yeah here's Pelagia's capital so actually like pretty close underwater capitals and then continuing you know to scout Ubar a bit 
don't really see any conflicts here, uh, but you know, just trying to get a sense of the world. And I think that covers turn 22. All right, E. Ermor, turn 23, finished research in construction two, uh, probably for those jars, uh, but also potentially thinking about owl quills foolishly uh, with no air income. And then we're moving on to enchantment, looking at that flaming arrows, and then eventually like twice born. Lots of useful things for us down enchantment, uh, but flaming arrows is the first thing at enchantment four. And then we had some misses with our site searching, uh, but our pretender found four magic sites, right? So yeah, this is more the happy result uh, with a rainbow. So love to see this. I don't know how many gems this is. It's a lot of gems. It's it's a very nice result. So the Woodlands is, is now a much more important province for us. And then we had some scouts come out. Uh, Helheim did not contest that province at all. So we you know committed way too much, but I'm okay with that. Uh, and then our raid works out against pretty minimal PD, although Ko-Oni can be a little scary. This is definitely a place that Agartha probably should have PD dumped, uh, but they may not have had the money, right? Because we are sitting on top of their capital. They're not that large, so it was probably just a question of they just didn't have the money to do it. Uh, and then Niflheim is actually going in more or less immediately on this throne. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think they felt that it was too difficult either because uh, they sent in, I think this is just their profit. Okay, you know, this is probably them trying to suicide uh, their starting profit. So a lot of times, you know, people profitize their, you know, first commander uh, for a lot of reasons I do. Because uh, I can't imagine this works out. Like, yeah, there's no gear. The bless is good, uh, but this is so many barbarians. Um, I wonder if it, yeah, I don't think it triggers gem usage, so it's not really working out as a gem bait. So, yeah, I think he was just trying to suicide his uh, starting profit because usually there's much better chassis uh, to make into your profit. You have to wait, I don't know, six months or a year, uh, a decent amount of time, but but not too long, and then you can proclaim another profit. And then only one unexpected event this turn. Yeah, so we had a mage get wounded. Not the end of the world. We have plenty of augers, and then we breached the entrance to Agartha. And I actually missed that there was a throne claim. Uh, so let's see, throne of the churning ocean, which I think is always underwater because I'm not familiar with that throne. And this looks like it was claimed by Oceania, so very nice for them. And yeah, let's see what we're up to. So this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, the main thing is we are storming this turn with more or less everybody. In fact, yeah, absolutely everybody. Uh, yeah, don't love this formation <laughs> that I have set up, uh, but you know, it's a double line, so we're at least a little tighter. Uh, you know, a square does open us up to like any evocation, and uh, there are going to be those rock throwers on the walls who absolutely can kill our equite. So, the double line is a bit of a mix, right? Because uh, if you're really long, then you know you're going to have a lot of guys just get hung up on the walls, and they're going to take a long time to try to actually get through the gap. Uh, but, you know, a box opens you up to more casualties from projectile fire. So a double line is sort of the in-between. So, sure. Uh, but anyway, they're just attack rear, right? Get in as, as quick as possible. Uh, our legionaries are just on attack closest. Um, and they're not going to fire their javelins because I don't think it's going to be that useful in the dark. And we would like them to get up on the wall and kill those rock hurlers. And then, you know, just behind everybody, the slingers are just going to shoot. Uh, they're not going to do too much. And then we just have our militia, like maybe even just should have dropped them off. Uh, one thing to say is like when you storm with everything like this, if you fail... Uh, you'll retreat off of the province, right? And then it'll unlock the fort. Uh, so usually you actually wanna leave something in reserve uh, in case things go badly. We actually have done that here because we're moving like additional forces in, which will arrive uh, before the assault happens. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll actually have like other pieces here um, that will sit on top of the fort in case the storm fails. And that's more or less it. We're not doing any more raiding. This cave does actually connect, but I don't think, you know, we'll be able to, to raid against this. It has been reinforced a little bit, like Magma Children, Great Alms. You know, kind of mostly what we've seen before. He's summoned in some ogres. Like, yeah, I think most of this is not really going to matter. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what he's gonna do. Maybe he like raids back, maybe he brings everything to the capital, right? And tries to fight 
battle like out in the field or you know maybe he would rather use the the gate uh you know because we outnumber him but i think either way we're in pretty good shape uh we see abyssia is bringing like their stack of sacreds down it looks like they're probably going for tnn's capital i'm guessing that this war like kind of started because you know tnn vultured some of arcos of Folly's territory uh but yeah i don't actually have the full story on that um and then otherwise like yeah just pushing our scout around like <laughs> kind of hard to tell like what's going on in Ubar's lands um and then like yeah getting a look at uh Saramesha is this their capital yeah so Saramesha's capital is here uh they're looking decently sized not sure how far they extend up to the north and then trying to get another scout uh down kind of into Alm's territory and you know see what Helheim is up to like and how that conflict is going recruitment is pretty similar Equite in the capital uh another Augur elder and then probably yeah more legionaries down here as well as augurs and probably another auger yeah so we're probably gonna be mostly producing augurs uh, out of this fort instead of the horticulturalist uh there is an argument to be made for recruiting more of these guys because they do get some nice randoms uh that you know we don't have too much access to but our summons kind of cover this and yeah i think the augurs are probably on the balance more effective mages uh so we do mix a few horticulturalists in now and again but mostly augurs and uh yeah i think that covers turn 23. all right ea ermor turn 24. we had some misses with our site searching uh some profits going up uh we caught a battle between some independents and Vanheim, uh, which is kind of interesting. I don't think we've seen Vanheim's Bless. We may have. Uh, but yeah, this is an Ice Druid, <laughs> which can be kind of nasty because he comes with all these Ice Drakes who have this Drake Frost. Uh, so if you're not set up to handle cold, then that can be a problem. But I do think that Vanheim usually is okay with the cold. Yeah, it looks like there's quite a bit of cold resistance on the Bless. Um, and there's a good amount of Sacreds here, although some of these are just regular Elf troops. Uh, so possibly these drakes are going to cause some problems. Oh, nice. It looks like the slingers managed to just snipe uh, the ice druids. So they all rout, um, which is good news because, yeah, these guys can be kind of nasty. Uh, and, you know, just like mixing ranged units often aren't great, but I do think the more that I play, it's like you kind of always want in an army at least a few ranged units if only to force a response like from your opponent it's like yeah like ranged units can be countered uh but if they don't get countered right you have situations like this where it's like you know there's an unprotected mage that you know you just snipe for the cost of like a few slingers which is not a high cost so yeah i think that was you know a really good battle for vanheim i think that could have been a lot bloodier uh, but works out just fine and then we get attacked uh in agartha so it looks like agartha chose uh two ride out um, which is a little sad because you know our formation is set up for an assault uh, but this does mean that we get the benefit of whoever you know moved here right so yes yeah, so we have a few mages here that are going to summon in some fire elementals and then you know a little bit of extra cavalry and infantry that we wouldn't have had had we fought inside of his capital and you know we just have a bunch of magma children out in front um you know there's sort of like a i think people, most people use them kind of like a cruise missile you know fire and forget and like you're probably not going to get them back uh, but that's pretty nasty like even with our fire resistance this flame strike does enough damage with a decent enough attack skill you know especially because our skills are worse in the caves like normally those guys kind of messed up um, they have experience too like normally our defense skill is like significantly higher right minus three from the darkness uh, so, you know, we would be in better shape if we weren't in a cave, um, but otherwise, like, yeah, he's got some pre-summoned earth elementals back here, not too worried about these cavern guards, and he's got a lot of mage support, though, um, not a lot of gems, so not sure, like, maybe just, like, some strength of giants, legions of steel, things like that, some army buffs, um, and then some mind blasters, but probably not enough to matter, and then this is actually his pretender, um, which I, I was not familiar uh, with a risen oracle so this is mortality grasps and uh yeah he's got quite a setup here so he's got increased magic resistance right from this uh ledge shield which isn't going to matter in this case but definitely could against early age or more so not a bad choice and then he's got a horror helmet which gives him fear uh, it's very useful and then a frost brand uh, we do not have cold resistance on the bless so our equite are not going to love this um he is only you know one creature so he's not going to get that many attacks so he's not going to be that killy 
Um, but, you know, he's got good protection, not amazing, but good protection. And then he's got some reinvigoration gear. His strength has been boosted. Probably not strictly necessary, uh, but, you know, he may, it's, sometimes it's like you just don't really have something for a particular slot. So it's like, sure, some more strength. Like, why not? You never know what you might run into. <laughs> um, and then, like, yeah, some extra defense and protection uh, from these bracers. Yeah, his defense skill is actually, like, surprisingly good so kind of matters there uh, but I think probably looking more at the protection he has taken an affliction uh, but it's just a limp and then something else that I miss in game uh, but he, he has immortality so that that's gonna be a problem if we do manage to kill him and then you know he's got some resistances and then the bless here so undead regeneration at first kind of looks like a bit of an odd pick for Agartha because their sacreds are not undead uh, you know, they're recruitable ones that you can actually see in the nation overview, but I think that Agartha gets some undead summons that are sacred. Uh, I'll have to double check that. Uh, so this may not be targeted completely uh, at his god, but his god is undead, right? So he's got 10% regeneration, and with 133 hit points combined with the fact that he has nature 2, <laughs> so he's probably going to be giving himself personal regeneration shortly, which stacks. So he'll have 20% regeneration. Uh, that's going to be pretty significant, and this guy's going to be a huge hassle uh, to kill so hopefully our cavalry are up to the task we have our divine divine blessing go off uh, that looks like was it some sort of spell that's going to destroy our armor probably looks like it didn't get too much at least for equite it looks like that was actually curse of stones here so we had some legionaries get hit with that that's a fatigue play probably not going to matter if our equite you know an army is able to kill fast enough um, but yeah, there definitely are some armor destruction spells going down, um, and then, you know, possibly, probably not a doom. I don't think there's any, uh, astral that Agartha really gets, um, and some of our cavalry makes it to the back, right? They are all on attack rear. Um, we don't have our morale problems, uh, from our starvation, because that's not happening anymore, so that's good. We get hit by a lot of earth meld, right? So that's, I think, a lot of what, yeah, earth grip and yeah, maybe just all earth grip earth grip earth meld one of them is just higher amount of targets uh, so that's a good use of earth mages and one that i had forgotten about it's a big problem for our cavalry because haven't given them given them any additional strength right so they mostly just have normal like yes yeah, so, okay we gave them a little bit of strength man somebody managed to not get blessed oh that's our our regular cavalry still mixed in i forgot about them uh, so we gave him a little bit of strength on the bless, but not a ton, so they are struggling to break out, and then of course when they get gripped like this, their defense skill goes way, way down, which is good news uh, for the pale ones, because you know, they don't have very good skills, uh, but they are able to kill our guys that you know get earth gripped, and there's enough casters here, you know, he's able to earth grip a lot of our cavalry, uh, so we're definitely taking casualties here. And then these guys, yeah, they've given themselves iron skins, so even though normally, right, they have no armor, pretty easy to take down with that iron skin the protection is actually respectable and it's taking us a little bit you know to actually cut through just the caster line alone um, and then yeah our legionaries are moving up but running into a lot of the same problems so this is really a situation right where like we didn't you know we brought two mages this is mostly like troops and sacreds and like the sacreds just haven't quite been enough like the lack of strength is a, a big problem uh, we are starting to cut through again like we have the numbers there, there's some routes going on here uh, but we haven't really made any inroads against his pretender who's actually managed to go up in hit points uh, that is probably because he's moving from a place that had lower dominion score uh, so he had a smaller pool of maximum hit points and now he's regenerated up to his you know absolute maximum because he's on his on top of his capital so he has the most dominion here most likely our slingers at this point probably aren't going to do too much they might get some alms uh, we do have some fire elementals in there and i don't think no he does have some fire resistance not actually sure where he's getting this from uh maybe let's see iron skin yeah elemental fortitude so that, that's a good choice a nature spell another reason you know to give your super combatant a little bit of nature um and like yeah now you know we're kind of earth gripped up we've at least routed off most of the casters so we're we're kind of just you know we have to kill the the god but the fear aura has kicked in not to mention we took a lot of casualties right and our equite have routed and with our equite routing, like how much does this guy regenerating a turn? Um, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're probably not even dealing like enough damage. <laughs> he's probably yeah, at max health. So, uh, but he's regenerating a lot. And like the fire elementals, maybe. 
uh, but you know with his fire resistance and they're just lesser fire elementals and yeah plus 35 like yeah there's no way our uh, study are ever gonna be able to do that the slingers are out of ammunition now uh, so they're coming forward to melee don't have high hopes for their success either and uh, yeah you know he's just gonna kill a few slingers you know before he convinces them yeah this is a terrible idea let's get out of these caves and then like yeah this is what you call a catastrophic defeat and also highlights the issues of moving an army out that doesn't really have any like super combatant answers, uh, which is definitely what that army was. Uh, so let's take a look. Agartha does lose a lot, some of which is significant, right? He loses a few casters, one of his cap onlys, uh, so that hurts. But, you know, he, most of them ran away, right? So he loses, like, yeah. Otherwise, like, the 40 magma children is pretty big. Like, it's going to be difficult for him to summon that amount back in. But otherwise, from a troop perspective, kind of inconsequential, and we didn't really get rid of that mage stack. And then the losses on our side are kind of catastrophic. Um, I mean, the only good news is we didn't really risk many mages, right? So we lose two Augers, not that big of a deal, but you know, we lose two thirds of our cap only sacreds around which this build is perhaps a little too focused. Um, so that's super bad news. We lose our equite, good riddance. Um, we lose, you know, about half of our hostati, a little more, um, which hurts. Like these guys, they're a little more expensive than, you know, normal infantry. Not too expensive, so it's not the end of the world, but that's a lot of gold to be losing, definitely. And then, you know, just a grab bag of other stuff that doesn't matter too much. We do actually have a lot of stuff for, like retreat successfully. Yeah, so 100 units made it out. We lose 30 more in the retreat, which does hurt. Um, but, you know, we still have like some units. Uh, no commanders survive, though, which is a bit of a problem. So like I said, this is a pretty catastrophic loss, uh, and it was definitely, you know, very sad to see. I was hoping that this game, you know, I'd be able to snowball and get a little bit of momentum, uh, but clearly I, I need some more lessons. Uh, and, you know, his pretender had shown up in some scouting reports, uh, but I just wasn't familiar. Like, in my mind, I mixed him up like with Agartha's cap only uh, casters. And so I just thought he was another one of those and didn't really think much of it. Um, but you know, now I know and was also thinking that, you know, it was maybe a little bit early to be worrying uh, about super combatants, but definitely wrong on that point as well. This isn't actually like that early of a war. So it was definitely overconfident of me to bring an army that, you know, didn't really have a lot of mage support. Uh, that was intentional, right? Because I was really hoping to not have to mobilize a lot of mages keep our research maybe not high but you know, at least not lose out on our mediocre research um, and you know I was thinking that like well Agartha doesn't look that strong I think we can pull this off but we could not and then we have Niflheim moving in on their throne uh, if we want to see an example yeah <laughs> of some sacreds that uh, are worthy of a pretty substantial bless uh, not that you really have to do that for Niflheim. Yeah, he's also got some Niflheim Jarls in here. Looks like they're unkitted. Probably, yeah, just mostly for the blessing. Um, me, yeah, I don't think they actually get any recruitable Holy Threes. So that is a bit of a hassle, especially because, you know, the Giants, they're size 6. So, you know, they take up a whole square. They're a bit of a hassle to bless up. Um, but, you know, even unblessed, they're pretty scary. And, of course, like with regeneration and they're, they're going to put guys to sleep with their cold aura. Barbarians actually are, like as far as independents go, like one of the types of troops that could conceivably cut apart giants. Um, but you can see that, like, they're not doing so well. Like, even in this situation, right, where this, this guy's kind of surrounded. Yeah, he didn't even get blessed. So this guy might actually die because he's not regenerating. Uh, but his his friend down here, he is regenerating, right? So this line is not going to collapse. Looks like they're on an attack rear, and a few of them do get back. A few of them run into the fire elementals, but of course this is in Niflheim's dominion in the cold. Um, and there is fire resistance, quite a bit of it, on the bless. So the odds of the fire elementals who are very sad, uh, you know, you see like, yeah, they're just, their skills get reduced. They, they don't love cold three. Um, and, you know, with the amount of regeneration, you can see like, yeah, a lot of these barbarians like are, yeah, super asleep from the cold, super frozen. And I do think possibly one sacred went down, but like, yeah, these guys are routing now. No, no, the barbarians are still fighting. See, I think there's fewer wizards definitely back here. Um, so, you know, you can just see, like, yeah, very powerful sacreds. You know, they do have their problems, right? The low attack density. Like, it does take a second to eliminate, you know, all these barbarians. But, like, I don't think 
anybody that's like regenerating is ever like this guy right here. Okay, so he was maybe like under some threat, right? Because he was almost completely surrounded by barbarians. Um, but even still, right, like he's got like about half of his hit points. And then I think Kniflheim, yeah, also took Undying plus six, right? So that means that he actually has like an additional, I think, 12 hit points. Now, I'm not actually sure, but I think it's it's two hit points like per point of Undying. Uh, so anyway, he's got even more hit points than like what it shows there because he can go into the negative and then, you know, regenerate those back up. Um, so anyway, so it's looking like a pretty strong bless. And, you know, Kniflheim is looking scary and, you know, pretty much just completely completely rolled over this throne. Not good, considering they're our neighbor and, you know, we just failed badly. We do at least have a non-aggression pact, so, you know, depending on how their scouting is, they may not know, uh, but, you know, people talk, so this failure probably will get around to them, and, like, yeah, the timing of this could not be worse. But that's how it goes, and then we had an unexpected event. I'm sure this will be great. Yeah, it's fine, you know, just some naked people. They don't believe in our god. And let's see what we're up to. All right, so this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, obviously, the, the war is not in a good place now. You can see we actually have, you know, decent concentrations of troops here in some of these surrounding provinces, so it is good that we managed to open up our retreat routes. Uh, like I said, though, no commanders survive, so there's a good chance that these troops get destroyed in, like, raiding attacks. Uh, they do at least, you know, have more retreat routes open, um, but anyway, yeah, it's very sad that, like, we can't actually pull these guys out yet. So we're just moving, like, some commanders out, you know, to hopefully, like, go, well, yeah, this, this commander's going to take two turns, so pretty unlikely we get those troops. Um, but, you know, got to give it a shot, like, that's enough gold there, we got to try to save that. Um, so right now we really kind of have, like, no army whatsoever, even though a lot of our army survived, uh, you know, none of it is actually, like, mobile or, like, usable right now uh, so you know we can't do any raiding or anything like that not that we're really in a position to really the only good news is that like Agartha doesn't really have much other than their pretender which was very significant uh, but he will be less effective right in our dominion uh, so you know he, he's definitely gonna come out right and probably start raiding us but he does need to be careful about actually like trying to move in you know to some of our areas that have like much higher candles because uh, you know, pretenders hit points is related to the strength of their own dominion versus the strength of the enemy dominion so in enemy dominion they're gonna be a lot less powerful uh, so we're a little bit safe from his pretender there and then you know he has mages but we kind of killed the few troops that he has so you know, this is really more of a concern in terms of like the wider world. You know, something like this coming at us right now would uh, would be really bad news. So obviously, we need to rethink our strategy a little bit. Uh, we still, you know, we got to recruit replacements, of course, uh, but we've modified the research a little bit. So we're going to go for thaumaturgy two, uh, which is going to get us mind burn, uh, which is not like a fantastic answer, but you know, it's armor negating and it's a way for our mages, our augurs, uh, to deal damage. Um, so, you know, maybe between like the baby fire elementals and, you know, our a bunch of mages mind burning, that might be enough damage to overcome, you know, pretty significant amount of regeneration. Uh, and then we're going to try to finish off enchantment four, right? If all of our slingers, uh, you know, can actually de deal fire damage, you know, our javelins will be de dealing fire damage. He does have, you know, some fire resistance, but it was only five, so that's not that much. So I think that'll still be helpful. Uh, you know, the other options potentially is to try to go to Conjuration 5 for the big fire elementals, really double down, you know, on fire elementals. Although, again, our fire income is not fantastic. Um, or, you know, go up to Thaumaturgy 5 for Soul Slay is probably, like, the surest thing and, like, maybe what I should have done. Uh, but, you know, we're doing this and then we're going back to being greedy and going for Construction 6 uh, for our lanterns and all that good stuff. There is one other thing that uh, Construction 2 netted us. Uh, so we're starting to forge these Just Man's Crosses. Uh, this is a crossbow and it deals uh, three times damage to undead and demons. Uh, so, it, you know, it's not a fantastic weapon normally, like it fires every other round and it's just one, you know, you give it to a commander and he shoots it and it's like, how much is it really going to matter? I mean, at most they're going to get 12 shots, so in a large battle it's like, kind of doesn't really matter. Uh, but, you know, we do have assassins, so potentially we could give it to them and like in large enough numbers, if it's only his pretender there, right, and we can stack up like, you know, four or five of these guys. 
Uh, you know, we'll be it, with all of our other sources of damage, right? Like, hopefully, this will be enough. Uh, the good news is we also want to use these items, or really just any bow. Uh, but you know, these cost fire gems, which early age or more tends to have quite a bit of. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be using these for some communion stuff later in the game. Uh, so this forging like won't be completely wasted later on. You know, it's not so narrow as to only be useful against their pretender. Uh, so I think we're just forging one right now. Yeah, but we're definitely planning on mixing that, uh, you know, into our next army. And then otherwise, like, yeah, just bringing reinforcements up, uh, doing some site searching. We are at least building a palisade here, uh, you know, on the throne. So that's good news. Probably good that, you know, it actually started that uh, last turn <laughs> when things were looking up. And then otherwise, we can see that Abyssia uh, is continuing to mass. But yeah, this is starting to look like a pretty scary stack. And he's also has like a ton of siege chaff here to back it up uh, so yeah this definitely looks like a force that's going to be capable of taking TNN's capital not really sure what Vanheim is up to other than clearing independence um, and then it looks like Alm managed to siege and crack Helheim's capital uh, and then it looks like Satis might be a little bigger than I first gave him credit for right here's Satis down here and they have a fort all the way up here so it's possible that they're just kind of like longer and stringy and just not very wide um, and then yeah continuing to scout like Saromatia they border Yomi. Uh, this, you know, isn't super relevant for us. And maybe it's like, a, I don't know. Saramesh is close enough. They're another person we could talk to potentially about jumping in against Nivelheim. Um, although realistically, yeah, like we would want this capital. They would want that capital, right? And if we invite Yomi in as well, right, they're probably going to want like Niflheim. So you do have to be careful about inviting like too many people. Um, but, you know, Niflheim's pretty scary. So like, it's like maybe if we just pick up like one or two, just a few provinces, but we don't have Niflheim as a neighbor anymore. I don't know. I, I would count that as a win. Uh, but anyway, we, that, that is a, a long way off. We have other problems now. And uh, yeah, I think that covers turn 24, kind of a rough one.